Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Tech Tested. We're going to be doing something that I've been meaning to do for a very long time. Today, we're going to be building my brother his very own gaming rig. Now, there's a very specific reason I want to do this. My brother actually gave me my very first gaming computer, which up until that point, I had really no interest in computers at all. And without that, I wouldn't have gained the interest in computer hardware and I wouldn't be making videos for you guys to see today. Now he has a very specific use for this gaming computer. It needs to be able to play several different games. But the reason I felt I really needed to build him a computer was because I saw him playing Skyrim on his laptop. And the reason I use quotes is because it looked more like watching several different still frames in succession, not actually gaming. So the games it needs to be able to play are one, Skyrim, Starcraft 2, Rome Total War, and Age of Empires 2. Those aren't really demanding games for the most part. Skyrim can be if you start modding it. So we really didn't have to go with super high-end hardware. And this leads us into our component choice. Most of the components we're using today are second hand. So the processor, memory, and RAM were donated by a friend, and I donated the rest of the components. What we have for our processor is an AMD FX6300, and you may recognize our motherboard as the ASRock 970M that we use in our sleeper rig. I am actually reusing it in this computer because I had to upgrade the motherboard in our sleeper rig, but we'll cover that in a future video. The graphics card we have is an AMD R9 270 from PowerColor, again, secondhand. We are gonna try to fit in a Cooler Master T4, but if it doesn't fit, we'll have to come up with something else. And we have an EVGA 500 watt power supply and a couple storage drives that may or may not work. We're gonna have to find out which one does. All this will be housed inside a Corsair Carbide Air 240 computer case. Let's get started, shall we? Obviously, we gotta start by disassembling the case. So here we go. One of the nice things that if you haven't done a whole lot of research on these types of cases is the, notice there's no place in the front for power supply or hard drives. And that is because it's all placed in the back here. So you get a really nice clean sensation from the front of your case without all the clutter of cables and hard drives that usually comes with it. So that's one of the biggest features that is nice about this case. Ah, take this off. And I didn't realize it, but this computer case actually comes with three Corsair AF fans, airflow fans, optimized fans. So we may or may not be repurposing these fans in this case, we may not be using them, um, but we'll see. Somehow. We'll actually do this with all of our cables. We'll pull them out back through here. I know these are front panel connectors, but I want them out of the way while I'm building it. And then I can rerun them once the motherboard and other components are in. Show me what you got. First things first, I have an apology to make. Inevitably in all of our video shoots, I forget to bring something with me. And today, that happened to be the IO for the motherboard. I know, it's bad. I'm sorry. It will get fixed in the future. We just can't do it today. I'm gonna be pulling out this case fan first. I think it'll make it easier to work inside the case. It's actually much tighter quarters than I was expecting. There we go. So I know I'm not using thermal paste yet, and this isn't going on in the right direction, but I am just doing a height clearance. And I can tell you right now, that ain't gonna fit. All right, that's all right. I just won't be able to overclock it as far with the cooler I've got. Because the Hyper T4 didn't fit, we are going to be using one of our homemade Wraith coolers. So I've got some Arctic Silver thermal paste here. I'm going to just put on a little dab. Not perfect, but it'll work. It's in here. Like this. Plug in the header and then just kind of tuck these in here. These will get cable managed when we do the rest of our build. All right. Now, I am going to be installing the RAM. This RAM was all donated by a friend and I don't typically recommend using different sticks from different manufacturers at different capacities, but this is a 
budget rig with donated parts. And if it doesn't work, I have some other RAM that we'll be using. This is six gigabytes. These are each one gigabyte sticks. These are each two gigabyte sticks. And so here we go. I'm also using this RAM because my spare RAM is red and that does not go with the theme of this build. I'll explain that later, but uh, yeah, that's not being used. We're gonna go ahead and do the power supply. So I'm gonna flip this whole thing over and we're gonna do the hard drives and power supply. All right, so when installing your power supply, this is a non-modular power supply. So as you can see, all the cables come out of one hole, but you want to orient it like this because the back panel, there is a filter and a cutout for fan ventilation. So this is how your power supply gets air with the fan pulling air from the outside of the case in. We will now be installing our three and a half inch hard drives. Um, we have three of them, so we will be using them all. Whether or not they all work, I don't know, but we'll be installing all of them just in case they do. So the way it works is it's just this drive sled. You pull, push these two tabs in, pull it out, and then there's pins for the holes, corresponding holes in the hard drive. So you just Bend it a bit, there you go, and then slide it back in. By the way, make sure that your SATA connectors are going into the case, obviously not out. So slide it in like so. Now we'll be installing our SSD, which works the same way. It's just a sled. Make sure that you have the SATA connectors going in to the case, not out fit into the little pin spots, like so, and voila. All right, now we've got all these cables here, and the nice thing about this case is most of the cables can actually stay back here. In fact, the only ones that need to be routed to the front, I believe, are our 24 pin, our, our right here, 24 pin power connector, or motherboard connector, which we're gonna run through this hole. Um, we need our eight pin CPU connector, which we're actually gonna run through this hole. Um, and then we will need one uh, VGA connector, which we are going to run, I believe it'd be best if we ran it through this same hole. So we may actually move where the motherboard 24 pin goes. It may, we may move it up here, depending on how it looks on the other side, but I'll figure that out once we're there. The rest of these, we do need, we may need a Molex like that for some of the fans that we'll be putting in here. Don't know yet. Um, so we're actually going to route this a little differently. And then we are definitely going to need SATA. Actually, good, this has two sets of SATA. So three of these are going to go over here and then the other ones will go over here for the SSDs. So we want to hook those up now. Like so. And we really only need one of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one, hook it up over here. And then the rest of these, we're actually just gonna neatly tuck away well, we don't even really, that's the beautiful thing about this case, you really don't need to tuck away very much because this does not interfere with any of your components and is not seen with the final build. Um, we also need our USB 3.0 header. And this is gonna be interesting because on our sleeper rig, we didn't have USB 3.0 front headers and the placement for the front header on this motherboard is rather odd. So we're gonna see if we can make this look good, but you'll see on the other side what I'm talking about. We're gonna wanna run it through here. And then we've also got the rest of our front IO, which consists of just your um, front panel connectors and 
a USB. Ah, la 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 la. USB 2.0. Or no, HD audio. I'm a liar. There is no USB 2.0 on the front. Audio connectors. Those run down here. Oh, come on. Really? Am I going to make this as ugly as possible back here? I mean, it doesn't have to look pretty, but if you can make it look pretty or prettier, do it. All right. And then I need to grab my SATA cables. So this is the one for our SSD. Actually, I want to use this one. Whoa. Lowest hard drive. I'm gonna route it underneath all these. Go through the same hole. I didn't realize I had that many right angle SATA cables. They're like all right angle. Actually, they. I could use all right angle SATA cables. Hmm. Probably not going to, but it's thought. So there is all of our SATA cables, and we're gonna stick the Molex back here still, because if we use fans that need a Molex connector, they're gonna be hooked up back here anyway. So that's gonna stay there. And so for now, just to make sure the cables stay put, we're gonna stick our back panel on. That may come off in the future, but for now, that's where it's gonna go. I'm gonna hook up my front panel connectors because front panel connectors. Okay, hard drive LED goes right there. Oh, positive and negative. Um, most of the time they're over here, the headers are, but on this motherboard, it's all the way back here, which is really inconvenient because your cable is running literally across all of your components, which is ugly as all get out. Um, so we're gonna try to make it look good. I can't make any promises. Um, actually, we might be able to just, oh gosh, oh gosh. I'm not sure there's a good way to make this. <laughs> Maybe if we like, but now we've got to put our SATA cables on before we start doing that. Anyway, yeah, that's an example of how terrible it looks. Um, here's our HD audio, which we are going to connect right over here, yeah. Try, if, if you're, like the reason this motherboard bends when you push down on it is because there's no standoffs here at the ends because this is an odd sized motherboard. If you're running into this problem, support it with some fingers like so, so that doesn't bend quite as much. Um, there is a little bit of flex available in motherboards, but you really don't want to do it if you don't have to. We are actually going to reroute this 24 pin connector um, because I think it would look better coming out of here. So we're going to Now we are going to be installing our graphics cards. Let me go grab that as well. One of the things a lot of people like about this case is the toolless expansion slot um, interface, which we're gonna find out really not right now if I really like it or not. Um, let's see here. It actually seems to work really, really well. So let's see. Hmm. I mean, it's not extremely tight, but it looks like it'll hold it. And once you get your, um, okay, that's better. Once you get your side panel on, this will put pressure on it and it will not release. So uh, we need to run our six pin. And this is when you start tidying things up. We are getting ready to start do our cable management. I'm actually gonna We are gonna work on that. We're gonna get some zip, a zip tie to help hold that in place. There we go. I know it kind of, uh, it doesn't look good against that back plate on that graphics card, but if we can kind of like tuck it in down here, it might look a little bit better. I think it does.
Now you may be wondering why I'm pulling all these fans out. Well, it's kind of interesting actually. Um, I went to Micro Center yesterday with my brother to pick out this case. This was the one, one of the few pieces that was not repurposed. And I said, since you're getting a case with a side window, we obviously need to get you some LEDs. And I said, well, what color would you like? I didn't really give a whole thought, lot of thought to that question. He answered with green. And I was immediately uh, taken aback because this computer features all AMD hardware, which is Team Red. And putting green LEDs in is ironic to say the least. But I thought, you know what? Why not? So not only are we putting a green LED in, we are also putting green LED fans. And you guys may disagree with that, but the way what I have to say to that is everybody can do what they want with their own computer. You're not restricted just because you're for team green, team blue, or team red. Now, keeping with the theme, we went with some Corsair fans, and I went with the static pressure ones, um, which may turn into a problem if we have to use the Molex connectors, which we probably will, if they even have adapters. <gasps> that could be a problem. I assumed that these would come with Molex adapters, which they may, but it doesn't look like they do. Oh dear gosh. So because I didn't do a whole lot of planning for this, um, not only did I forget the rear IO cover, which you guys already hate me for, but you're not gonna get to see this computer powered on with all of the pretty green LEDs. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna finish the build here on camera, but I'm going to be putting pictures of everything working up on our forum. So you guys will be able to see the finished, finished product there. This is, it looks like a cold cathode, but it is actually an LED strip in this style of cold cathode, which I hadn't seen before. And I really like this setup because I thought cold cathode lights were much easier to set up, but they're much less reliable. So essentially we just have to find a good place to mount this. And I was initially thinking across the top right here. After I just explained how much I like these cold cathode designs, it's not gonna fit very well in this case. In fact, the only place I found that it's gonna fit well is the bottom right here, which I don't think is a problem because we're gonna have plenty of green light coming from the top and the front with the green LED fans. So this is actually gonna work all right. Um, so that's what we're gonna hook up first. I'm not actually hooking up any of the fans today. So when we power it on, all you're gonna see is the green LEDs from this strip. But like I said, we'll be posting pictures. So check out our forum. All right, not perfect, but it'll work. A really good way to hide these ugly cables that come with these lights is to tuck them away underneath and behind fans. Um, usually they'll stay there just fine. We'll stick it through here first. As you can see, you don't want this cable just sticking out here all willy nilly like it wants to. So just tuck it behind here. You may have to use a zip tie or two, but usually the ears will hold it. As most of you know, this is probably the most satisfying part of any computer build, peeling back the plastic. Ah. And there it is. As long as you guys are willing to overlook the lack of planning with the missing IO and the non-functioning green LED fans right now, I think it turned out beautifully and I really can't get over the irony of running green LEDs in a purely AMD based hardware computer. But this is a great computer for my brother. It's nice and small and compact so he can tuck it away at home or bring it to LAN parties with all of us when he comes to play. I promise I'm gonna fix the green LED fans in the rear IO and I'm gonna post pictures of it on our forum at techtested.io 
One of our members already posted a thread with show off your rig, so it's gonna be posted there. And if you guys want to show off your computers as well, we are going to be picking from time to time and featuring in our videos one of your computers if we think it is extra interesting or has really cool hardware, so on and so forth. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, leave a comment, and check us out on our forum at techtested.io.